Good morning. My name is Pranay and through this simple video, I would help you understand measurement system analysis for containers data. I hope you would already know that one of the very important questions in the measure phase of Six Sigma is to check the validity of the data that you've collected. Data which becomes an important repertoire of our decision making has to be verified for its correctness. As Six Sigma professionals, as blackbirds, as statisticians, you must always start with the thought of data not being correct and you must check before you use the data any further. And measurement system analysis is all about that. And for conducting measurement system analysis, one of the most imperative questions is the data type. If your data is continuous, there are two options. If you were to validate your equipment being used, you would use a method called test-retest, which essentially checks for precision of your equipment and checks for accuracy of your equipment. While if you were to check for operator and equipment both, you would use the gauge RNR ANOVA method. There are several other options available. I'm simply discussing the two of them. Test retest is done to validate the equipment only. Hence, you would use the concept of repeatability to do your test retest. The test retest essentially checks for two inherent aspects of data. One, which is called accuracy, the other, which is called precision. Assume that you have a Coke bottle. You take it to a standard body, let's say a, a, a government body, which you are sure of. You take the Coke bottle to that body, get it measured. Let's say they came back to you saying that the amount of coke in that bottle is 198 ml. So that is your standard. Now get this coke bottle back to your organization and measure it over and over again using your equipment. Accuracy will compare the mean of your measurement against the standard. So let's say you measure the coke bottle using your equipment 40 times or 50 times and I found out that the mean of your measurement stands at 196.5. I know that the standard body, the government body, the calibration body told me that the measurement was 198. So for accuracy, you would calculate a value called bias, which is nothing but the standard minus the average. So in our case, it is 198 which the standard body told us, minus 196.5, the average of the measurements that we have taken. So the bias would come to 1.5. Now it is completely your call, your organizational standards will decide whether that amount of bias is acceptable or not. Industries will have different specifications for bias. For certain industries, a 1.5 is okay. Certain industries, it might not be okay. There is no rule of thumb here. You will have to decide on your industry type. The second question is about precision. So to check the precision of your equipment, you have already measured the coke bottle multiple times. Now it is time for you to identify, measure or calculate the standard deviation of the measurements that you've taken. So, like in the example I was quoting, you've taken the measurement, let's say, 40, 50 times. You calculate the standard deviation that you have observed. And if the standard deviation of, the, of your measurement is less than one-tenth of the tolerance of the equipment being used, we will say that your equipment is precise. I'll repeat that for you. Accuracy measured using a value called bias. Bias is equal to standard minus the mean, while precision 
is a comparison of standard deviation and the equipment tolerance. If the standard deviation of the equipment is less than one tenth of the tolerance of the equipment, we will consider the equipment as precise. I hope this uh, simple explanation helps. Let's move on. The next thing that you would do, like we discussed earlier, if you, if you want to validate both your operator and your equipment, you use a method called gauge RNR ANOVA. Again, several other methods are available. We are talking about gauge RNR ANOVA method here. Gauge RNR ANOVA method essentially looks at three important parts of the answer that it gives you. A, it talks about percentage contribution. B, it talks about number of distinct categories. The third is percentage tolerance. I hope you know that when you conduct the gauge RNR ANOVA method, it gives you a value of gauge RNR as a percentage of total variation. It gives you the value of total variation, etc. So the first thing that you must check for is whether the gauge RNR contribution is less than part to part. The gauge RNR, which is your measurement variation, must be significantly lower than your part to part variation. Next is the, per, uh, the number of distinct categories. The number of distinct categories must always be greater than or equal to 4. And the third value that it will measure is percentage tolerance. So vis-a-vis -vis the process tolerance, gauge RNR will measure what is the total contribution of tolerance. If the gauge RNR as a percentage of tolerance is less than 10%, it is considered to be okay. If the contribution is between 10 and 30, it may be considered okay with caution. If it is greater than 30%, you must reject the percentage tolerance. Any of these three failing would mean that your gauge RNR ANOVA has failed. So three golden rules if you were to say. One, gauge RNR as a percentage of total tolerance must be smaller than, I say significantly smaller than part to part variation. Number of distinct categories must be greater than or equal to four. And gauge RNR is a percentage of tolerance less than 10%. Okay. Between 10 and 30, okay with caution. Greater than 30, you must reject it. I hope this simple video helps. Although, I would advise that one, one video you must look at is the uh, gauge RNR exercise that I've done for you in Minitab to explain these three components. I hope this simple video helps.